DJ Marconi! DJ Marconi! DJ Marconi! You think you are the champion? You say you defeat all men? Well, you've never defeated me! You say this is your house! This is your house? I'm already in your house! And on November 5th, Mario Bocca is gonna be back in your house! And this time, I'm coming for your title! And welcome to a special Crossroads edition of Overdrive. I am Cheyenne Ortiz, and so many things are happening as we are on the road to Crossroads right here at the Morgan Junior Arena, November the 5th, right here in Wallington, New Jersey. As you just saw, Mario Bocara has issued the challenge for Crossroads 12 right here at the arena, challenging TJ Marconi. As if Marconi's days have not been going bad enough, initially it was Dan Moff who made quite the epic return and laid down the challenge and called Marconi, for lack of a better term, a pendejo. In addition to that, Mario Bocara has said he's coming back to Marconi's house, making the match now a three-way event. But as if Marconi wasn't having the worst days of his life already. It was right here in this arena at our last event, Rise to Power, where in a shocking upset, Crowbar pinned Teji Marconi, giving him his first loss since the basically the springtime. Marconi's been on a roll 400 days undefeated between two title reigns since becoming the ace heavyweight champion. We now know your huge main event for Crossroads right here November the 5th, a fatal four-way matchup. History will be made one way or another. This is in fact the match that TJ Marconi needs. Is he the greatest of all time? Will Dan Moff make history becoming the first ever Triple Crown three-time ace heavyweight champion? Will Crowbar win his first ever heavyweight title on the indie scene? Or will Mario Bocara be the first man in ace history to win the ace heavyweight title under two different identities? because previously who was in fact the legendary Mo Sexton in the Ace of Old. And speaking of the Ace of Old, this week I have an exclusive sit down interview which I just finished conducting with one of the competitors in that huge main event. Dan Moff is my guest this week in an epic sit down interview and we've got huge singles action. It's Mike Donovan taking on Sebastian Cage, but let's take you right now to the first part of my interview with Dan Moff. Hey, Saints of China, our teaser, and as I promised, a sit-down interview that would not disappoint. Joining me right now, one of the four competitors in the main event for this year's Crossroads, Danny Moff. A pleasure to have you here in the A Studios. We're talking about big-time main event. A lot on the line for you and your other three competitors, but before we get there, you go all the way back to the Ace of Old, to Sip Street, to the original building. What does Crossroads mean to you exactly? And what are some of the moments that you've etched in the annals of Crossroads? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let's go back to the Ace of Old on Sip Avenue. Uh, that was a place where years of hard work, even before you know, um, I got to Ace, um, <clears throat> what made it so special was the fan base and the community behind it, you know, and um, it, it was, it was a, a, a show of strength of the whole community that would come out, and they were involved, and they were in, in you know, intertwined mm -hmm. with the stories of Ace, and um, it, it was a very intimate um, atmosphere, um, you know, Mike treated it as uh, 
the company, but he also made the fans feel like, hey, this is part of your community. Yeah. You know, and um, <clears throat> I think that's where um, it, 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 it was it, it was it was very special and unique in that aspect. Um, you know, as, as to you know, as opposed you know another company which isn't so involved in the community and um, so on and so forth. But yeah. Ace was very involved with the community, and the community was very hands on with uh, with Ace. You know, um, everybody knew Mike's children, yeah. and um, everybody would come, and you would you know they knew that on this certain Saturday, or sometimes every other Saturday, um, they knew that. You know, the empanadas would be frying, yeah. and, you know, the, the, the music would be playing, and they would all jam into the hot room, you know, with the wrestling in it. And sometimes it was standing room only. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And that was when it was most special. Yeah. Um, I've had uh, some, of, some of my most memorable moments in my career. I said, that was, I think, what was most unique about it. Now, obviously, we're a few days away going to Crossroads 12, but what matches have you had at previous Crossroads? When you look back at the history, what are some of the things that you've, you've done selling yourself, okay, I did that, and now I've got to surpass what it was? I think, um, I think the one that stands out to me the most was the um, Iron Man match. Sexton, and um, the build-up leading to that was just incredible, and the production, <clears throat> excuse me, the production um, leading to that yeah. was, was incredible, you know, just the job, the effort, the hours that, you know, Mike and Mike Jr. Yeah. Um, would put into these things, and, 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 and the, the, the emotion, and the, you know, it would just show up, man, and it was just, you know, two guys, you know, we went in there, you know, me and Sexton, we went in there, man, and we gave it everything we had. We recently, me, Mikey D, and John Harder in private spoke about that at Rise to Power, and we kind of all unanimously said that was the first, and, and this is a big statement that's about to be made, could you say, maybe even if you want to go as far as just for your career, the first big match feel, maybe, of that time when you really think about it? <clears throat> I think, um, like all that hype and all that hype and ball, the first big match feel kind of setting the pace continuously for Crossroads, like that's the place to be. Well, if you kind of look down on my arm and see the goosebumps, yeah. I'm just talking about it right now. Um, there's something, there's something about um, the whole Mo Sexton, um, Danny Moth dynamic. Um, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to pinpoint it. But, you know, that man brings out the best in me. Mm -hmm. And I know I bring out the best of him. And um, it's, it, it, there's a ton of respect. There's a ton of respect. You see it. Between um, me and him. I always, I will always say he is the greatest unsigned talent on Independence. And at that point, <clears throat> I was very vocal about it. And I would speak to Mike about this a lot behind the scenes. And I would say that he is independent, independent wrestling's best kept secret. And um, Mike would laugh about it. And he would say, uh, duh, yeah, you know, that's why, you know, this is, it's, it, you, Sexton, mm -hmm. is going to take this company the next step. You know, this is the feud. You know, and, 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 and I didn't, I, I didn't know him. And I said to Mike one day that I came in to, to the arena, I said, Mike, I said, I, I gotta <clears throat> show me this guy. I just, I hear you, you keep talking, you keep talking about him. Let me see. He showed me um, a clip. It was, it was a clip involving him and Jay Lethal. And I said, wow. I said, I'm sold. And um, I can't wait to work with this guy. And I met him. And, um, you know, the rest is history. Um, you know, nothing but respect for him. Yeah. And, and but when we're, when we're in the ring, you know, it's it's a total, you know, it's a machismo thing. You yeah. know, um, hey, listen, man, you know, 
yeah, I know you're a top dog. You know I'm a top dog, but they can only be one alpha. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's an it's, interesting dynamic to surprise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To say the least. Now, let's fast forward a bit because you did compete in the Morgan Dream Arena. You've had your battles with TJ Marconi yes. in controversy and such. Now, you recently came back at the end of one of his matches mm -hmm. and cut a very interesting promo and had a litany of words for him, his championship reign, your future goals in ace, and so on. Talk about what the point you were trying to get across and where those words came from and what exactly the overall message is for him, ace, and your other competitors in Crossroads. I'm going to start by saying this. Um, you know, I, I, I'd be a fool not to understand and um, not to respect um, the athleticism and the intent of one TJ Marconi. Okay. Um, the man is six foot four, six foot five. Six. Legit. Yeah, he's like you know a lot of people say that they're six foot four, six foot five, but they're not. This guy is. Um, he moves around like he's a cruiser. Um, he hits hard as hell. I mean, he's a legit ass kicker, you know, and um, and he, he comes from that litany of badasses, yeah. you know, he was trained, I know where he comes from, I know who trained him, you know, and, um, you know, he's no pushover, um, you know, blue-eyed devil, you know, all that said, you know, T.J. Marconi is no joke, um, <clears throat> He's been an ace champion. You know, he's had his reign. 400 plus days between two okay. reigns. That's something. All right. You know, he, he's had his reign. You know, that's no. Nation, that is just the first half of my interview with Dan Moff. As you saw, he just touched on some of the classic moments he had in the old Ace Arena and in the original sections of the Pinnacle event, Crossroads. Will he make history once again? The only way to find out is on November the 5th. Tickets are available at aceprowrestling.com. Dan Moff looking to become the first ever three-time Ace Heavyweight Champion, but he's got a lot of people breathing down his neck and the champion's neck, which we'll touch on in our second half of the interview as he talks about his goals going towards the future, and he pinpoints every single opponent in that four-way main event. Right now, we've got singles competition. It's Mike Donovan taking on Sebastian Cage. It's singles competition, but both competitors have crossroads in mind. Let's not forget, Donovan is going to be in the Battle of New York taking on E.C. Negro right here at Crossroads 12, while Sebastian Cage has his first fight for flight opportunity when he takes on the champion Jesse Vane and former champion the Concrete Rose Sunny Kiss. Let's take you to singles action right now. Um, Ace. Since dawning the tights here in this very promotion, not to mention, you want to talk about stellar matches at Crossroads, that's the man to look up right there. Definitely, definitely. We've seen this man in ladder matches. We've seen this man in title matches at Crossroads. How about that uh, show stealer he had last year with Ricky Richards? This is, this is a, a definite point that you make. Bell sounds, this match is going to be underway. Now I'm going I'm to have to say that the speed advantage is kind of nilled out. Both of these men are quick. Both are wily. Cage has the height advantage. Donovan has a has a bit of the power advantage as well as the experience. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how this match unfolds as we go. Donovan right now getting the better hand. Trying to tie up the wrist, rolling through and reversing now does Cage. Cage got the uh, smaller body mass, Donovan. Rolling through, kicking up. Oh, and a drop toe hold. Great chain wrestling to start things off right here. Floating over. Oh, reversing through now. Up front, front chance, reshades of Larry Zabisco. Donovan transitions. Donovan out, standing side headlock. Trying to get the momentum away from Cage. 
Cage using the height advantage to just jump oh, over the big shoulder. Huge big. shoulder. Did you hear that impact, Mikey D? Cage just got thudded right into the back of his head, but moving out of the way, now floating up and over. Rolling through, nope, putting the brakes on. Oh, the prawn hold, the prawn hold pin! Oh, slapping the legs out from under, going for a cover, doesn't even get one. Give that a half count. Donovan with the exchange. Back and forth action. Ducking a clothesline now. Stay in position, no. Oh, went for Donovan's got him, Donovan's went got him. Hurricane Ron, and now just holding him. Holding him upside down. Picking him up, look at him, he's over a power line, but over the cover. No, roll through. Floating through. Oh, ducking the kick. Single leg takedown. It's a roll up. One. Beautiful technical and wrestling. And we are at a standoff. Beautiful technical mat wrestling. Show of respect from the fans in the building. Great action here. Little. Little respect, center of the ring. You know, I've known Donovan for no Donovan for seven years. The man is the reason that they call me classic. That was his suggestion, but he's about the competition. He has no problem opening a door, but he has no problem shutting the door on anybody who might come in on his territory. Absolutely. Head games. Oh, ducks it. Do it. Oh, straight rights. Look Snapping him. Snapping him away. Four rights, not full head of steam. Wheelbarrow. Oh, caught Stuck him. And, uh, oh, and the kick. And the youngster got taken to school by the Brooklyn Outlaw. Classic Donovan offense with that seated single leg. Go over the cover, getting a two count. Refue in perfect position for the two count. Refue is going to need more than the power of love to officiate this singles matchup. I see what you did there. Meanwhile, in the ring, back elbow. By the way, I spoke to Ref Huey earlier in the day. He actually uh, recommended a couple of tattoo parlors for when you want to go and get that butterfly on your back finished. Are you trying to say I should get a tramp stamp? I, I said finished. Diving out back in control here. Oh, Cage though, straight. Straight shots to the midsection, throwing rights, throwing lefts. Oh, oh. That big chop. Chops now on the uh, menu at concession. Benjomatic, that is Mike Donovan, is now going to work. Oh. And again. Think about the year that Donovan has had going into Crossroads. He was a, a tag champ, then fight for a flight champ. A lot of people were, were, uh, were feeling a lot of rumblings that he had lost his way after losing the titles. That's right. Whoa! Big chop from Cage, making a pair. And an uppercut. Cage is lighting up Wait. on Donovan. Oh, Doug in the chop. Saw it coming. Cage. Oh, just thudding a shoulder. Not only is the future lit, but so is Donovan's chest as he peels away to the other corner. Want to point this out? Cage is putting all those chops on the left side of the chest, trying to, trying to get that pectoral muscle. Donovan is a southpaw, and that might actually take a little bit of the swing Absolutely out of right. that left arm. Classic one, do you hear what I hear? This crowd is split. This crowd does not want Donovan to put his full on saw onto Sebastian Cage. You know what's kind of crazy? As I look around the crowd, I see a lot of new faces here in Ace. Being exposed to Ace for the first time, I always recommend it to fans of professional wrestling to check out the best in the indies. Oh, we're going to see matches like this. Donovan shows her down. Refueing in perfect position. Donovan back with the lariat. Wow. The huge left arm. Cage evaded that signature vertical suplex. Turned into a roll up. Donovan peeled out and took Cage down with that lariat. Wow. These guys are laying it all out there. They want to be in the, in the driver's seat going into crossroads. Ace's marquee match. Oh. Showcase, if you will. The pinnacle, as our broadcast journalist, John Harder, has described it. Reversal. Hold up on the top rope. Donovan now. Up and over. Throw Cage up and over. Cage Nimble. Inzaguri. Big Inzaguri right across the side the of the dome. Springboard. That's that signature offense. Whoa. Whoa. Springboard and over hitting the second rope. Coming across with a big hurricane around The referee almost got taken out there. Here we go. Cage is feeling it. Big running forearm. Resetting. And the uppercut. Donovan appears to have a scrape on the elbow. Is that what I see? Appears to be. On that right elbow. Is that a gash there? 
Roll it across and it's late. Big sick kick. Lateral press. Sebastian Cage has got a two count on Mike Donovan. Standing. Boot salt. I can. Donovan's run out of steam, it looks like. I'm very impressed with the offense of Sebastian Cage. Cage is definitely impressing me right now, but he's got to stay on it. He's got to stay on it. You say there's nothing left in the tank. Donovan's got a lot left. Who will be a pawn in the game of human chess here tonight at Rise to Power? All this and more. Donovan, just like that. Trying to put the brakes on Cage, but Cage is getting the better. Cage did not have both feet on the inside, though. He could have Oh, been... big, big uppercut with the palm. And now Donovan in control once again. Same from the south side of Brooklyn's got some, got some thoughts about a skyscraper. Could it be time? Go for the second rope superplex. Whoa, whoa, There he whoa. is, he's got him in the skyscraper. Wow. Super skyscraper. Vintage Donovan. Flowing down. Donovan peeled it out of the old ace books. The skyscraper suplex. Cage is laid out. Both men down, referee. Referee starting the 10 count. All the blood just rushed to the head of Cage and then it came crashing down. Donovan on adrenaline. The referee's now at five. Both men have not shown any interest in moving. Now, now they do. Both men almost simultaneously. Hey, there's, there's Negro. Oh, come on, enough already. Negro on the court last month won the losing end against Donovan and the Sensations. The oh, match straight. does continue as Cage and Donovan exchange blows on the inside, but the referee has his back turned to the action. Oh, wow, Donovan asked for more. Donovan wants it, he's gonna direct right back. The left cross. Look at EC Negro, he just watches on as his opponent gets dissected. Oh wait, now the court. Oh, come on, the see court. it, smooth, trying to get involved here. See meanwhile, this move finally dropped from the apron. Meanwhile, in the ring. Wait a second, Cage and Donovan! Cage and Donovan! The court has been taken down! And Donovan pointing at Humpty Dumpty himself! Cage back in the ring now, Donovan getting back in the ring, but Donovan's keeping his eyes on Negro. Both men have their backs turned, but look, Cage! Well, Cage. Cage sees his opportunity! Electric chair, oh my god! Wow. Thought he was gonna go for the reverse or kind of and the knockout! The knockout! South side, lateral press, the leg is hooked. It's over. Mike Donovan gets the last knockout going into Crossroads 12. However, Sebastian Cage had quite the showing against the premier veteran right here in American Championship Entertainment. King Negro's got a lot on his mind. However, can all the King's horses and all the King's men put EC Negro back together again? You'll have to find out right here on November the 5th for Crossroads 12, the pinnacle event for American Championship Entertainment. We now take you to my second half of the interview I conducted earlier with Dan Moff. It's gonna be quite the interesting listen. Some very harsh, honest, deep felt words coming from the monster himself, Dan Moff. He's gonna touch everything, including his Crossroads opponents and his opinion on the current ace roster, including their lack of drive and hunger and even manhood in some instances. Dan Moff does not advise you that this is his opinion and he stands by it. Viewer discretion is in fact advised, mostly to the ace locker room. Let's take you to the second half of my interview. Point that I make is that is ace of today, and I'm not disrespecting any talent here at Ace. I'm not disrespecting, but it was just a different era. When I was at Ace in Union City, it was a different era, and um, I, I, I wish you could ask Mike Morgan this question. You know, it was a different era. It was a dog eat dog. You know, it was like, man, you got to survive. Yeah. You know, and Mike knew it, man. He knew he had some 
but excuse my mm-hmm. my French. He knew he had a locker room full of bad motherfuckers mm-hmm. in that locker room, and he had that title. He had that means to listen. You want to be number one. This is going to make you number one. Yeah. Here it is. Now who's bad enough to take this? You know, and that's how it was. You know, it was like dog eat dog, man. You knew. You knew that if you were you were on top, yeah. you knew that you had six or seven or eight guys literally breathing down your neck and waiting to take you out. You know, and these guys, these, these, these were bad people. Great, great people, great talent, but you know, there was just no good intentions. Everybody wanted to be a top guy. Everybody wanted to be a top dog. Nobody, nobody was okay with being number two. Nobody was okay with being mid card. Everybody wanted the top spot, mm-hmm. and they were gonna get it, you know. And um, yeah, I just, in my opinion, I just think the TJ's run now. You're the man bringing that at his time, now. but it's not. It's not. I don't see that ever here. I don't see anybody really, really, really like breathing down Marconi's neck and saying, hey, man, I'm right here. Or watch your ass, you know, because I'm going to be the one to take you out. I don't know. Like, you know, I just don't see anyone here like getting in his mug, man, and just matching him and telling yeah. him that, you know. And, um, and, 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 that, and that's, hey, you know, it's, listen, he's at the right place at the right time. You know, that, that's no fault of his, you know, um, you know, it's just every couple of years, you know, wrestling changes, wrestling fades. Mm-hmm. Let's say in a couple of years, I won't be around. I'll be a memory. You'll be talking about me, you know, hopefully being mm-hmm. three-time Ace Heavyweight Champion. The first. First son. The first man to ever hold that title three times. Um... You know, and, and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, I just basically, I told I told TJ, and I wanted to tell him to his face. I didn't want to tell him over a promo. I didn't want to tell him over a camera. I wanted to tell him what I thought um, about his title. What I thought about him. And, um, you know, and I, I literally told him. I said, listen, man. I said, it's no disrespect, man. You know, but this is where I come from. This is what I am. You know, this is... This is what makes me, you know, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about in the early to late seventies, okay, when Mike's father was in the business and this is the way I saw things. This is the way I saw the things were done. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't show up and you didn't, and you didn't go to the the baddest guy in the locker room, and he would tell him, say, listen, in my opinion, no disrespect, but I think you're a bandale. Like it took balls. What you did, you did call TJ. And, that, and that's and that's exactly what I did. And that's exactly what I did. You know, but it, it's up to him to answer. But my counter to that is, you're not the only one breathing down his neck in this situation. Initially, you were, but now you have Mario Bocca and the wild card in Crowbar. It's a four-way. There's going to be history made one way or another, whether it's TJ surpassing all of you, whether it's you becoming the first ever three-time ace heavyweight champion, Mario Bocara making his debut and making the biggest impact of maybe all time, and then Crowbar for the first time ever, he could become a heavyweight champion somewhere. How do you feel with all that on your plate? Crowbar is an enigma. That's right. Okay. Everyone who is in the independence or in the business knows exactly who Crowbar is and knows what he's done, where he's been, knows all the attributes, everything that he's done. No one takes Crowbar. It's taken me weeks to heal from a match with Crowbar. Crowbar's a savage. He's a lunatic. He's out of his mind. But 
just when you think that he's crazy, that's when he's in control. Man is very intelligent. Listen, he's not, you're not, at his age, whatever his age is, he's still doing this. And he's still doing this at a level where he can compete with anyone. Mm -hmm. Okay? He could go right now, he, he can step in that ring. He could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody on the WWE roster or an NXT roster. Okay? So just to be in the ring with a guy like that makes a guy like me sweat a little bit. And when I sweat, that's when I'm at the top of my game. And Mario Boker, nothing but respect for that man. I respect him. I love him. But I will not hesitate to knock his head off his shoulders to become the first three-time heavyweight champion of Ace. And TJ Mark. Ace Nation, the goal is right there. It is set. Danny Moth. TJ Marconi. If TJ Marconi wants to prove me wrong, he better prove me wrong. Because it's up to him. Because if he comes out of this, if he walks out of this, Ace Champion, I will personally I will personally walk across that ring out of respect. I will smack him right in the face and I will put the title right around his waist and I will call him champion because he will earn my respect. Against all odds, history will be made. Crossroads 12, November the 5th, right here at the Morgan Junior Arena. One fourth of that huge history making match. Danny Ma, my guest this week. Right here on Overdrive. Ace Nation, like I said, heartfelt, honest, and to the point. Very harsh words. Dan Moff putting the entire Ace roster on notice. Is it because he feels a certain way, or is it because he knows in his heart he's going to be the first ever three-time Ace heavyweight champion? Now, that's quite the comment right there. However, Dan Moff had most of the comments for this week's Overdrive. And next week, you'll get to see an interview that I conducted with the current Ace heavyweight champion, TJ Marconi, who as always, has never had a loss for words and was in quite the foul mood when discussing his four-way matchup at Crossroads right here on November the 5th. And huge action next week. We finally have the rematch. American Powerhouse has granted the former Hollywood... Thank you, Mr. McDonald. I can't say that. William Wyeth and Alvin Alvarez finally get their rematch. It's tag team action. The tag titles are on the line. Who will have the bullseye? going into the chance of a lifetime rumble. All that and more Crossroads coverage next week. Cheyenne Ortiz here when you're on all the action. Kick it into overdrive.